I've got a question for you. Sorry. I'm going to change the subject. Well, I'm going to come back to Pete. You can Sorry. do that. Pete's got a lot of things I can tell you. What he's, he, he sang uh, Barnacle Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good story. I mean, but that was a good, stupid uh, thing. Okay. I said, is it, is it, what, what is your opinion? What is a hero? What is a person that is of great renown to you people? What do you think a, a, a legend should be or is, is a legend? Yeah. You want an example? Yeah, give me an example. What is a legend to you and why? And why? So I actually, I've been thinking a lot about this throughout this kind of conversation. I realize there's a lot of kind of generations of heroes at play here. Um, I'm, I'm just a squire right now. I've only really been active for a few years. To me, some of the heroes, especially from where I'm at, are like Duke John Paul, uh, Owen. Those are my heroes. Um, and yet, for, for you guys, uh, they, they're so much, they're, they're, they're a newer generation. Yeah, I voted on both of them. But, <laughs> but, but, but they're my heroes. I voted no on both of them, so there. <laughs> right. To me, um, I, I think those are both great examples of men who just kind of embody that chivalry wherever they go. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've seen John Paul have a good time partying, but he also just has a presence to him that carries that, that, that chivalry, that honor, just everywhere. And, and I think that that's a presence that defines that knighthood to me. And like, I can see it looking across it. Um, and and I, I feel like that's, that's what we, those of us who aren't there yet, who are aspiring to that, are really seeking to get, is that, that feeling of chivalry when people talk to people. And so, like they said, that's why they're mine, and I'm, and I'm seeing it here too. You know, it's interesting that you say you talk about not being there yet and whatnot, because um, it is a journey, it remains a journey. But there's a really tenuous part of it, and I'm sure the same thing goes for scarves and masters of defense and, and all the peerages and whatnot. Uh, I was in a belted circle one time with my squire, before Ron von Zanti was brought up, and there was a large circle. And there was and discussion and talk and whatnot, and uh, I asked to go last in the vote, and everybody there, and I'm talking 20 some odd nights. And, okay, 27 <laughs> nights, voted yes, and it got to me, and I sat there, and I was just so conflicted. I very much wanted to see my my squire, my friend, get knighted, but to me, he wasn't a knight yet, and. I sat there and, 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 and the words wouldn't come out and I finally just looked at the king and I said, Your Majesty, I'm sorry, he's just not ready. And Patrick was crestfallen, was like, okay, conversation ends. His knight said, no, it's sorry, it stops. Because he was like, I really wanted to make him a knight. I said, I understand your Majesty. And then I had the fun task of having to go tell Corwin, I just shot him down in the circle. Which, if anybody here has a student or whatever, you know, or, or kid even, um, it was not an easy conversation. I thought it was not going to be an easy conversation, but he showed me what a quality person he was. I told him what happened, and he said, you're my knight. If you don't think I'm a knight yet, then I'm not a knight yet. So the happy part of this is, a few months later, we're at uh, fighter practice with Ringwald, and I, 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 by the way, I explained to him, I said, by the way, it, it also occurred to me, I said, you're trying to be a knight like I'm a knight. I said, don't try to be Sir Pindir, just be Sir Corwin. He and I are very different people. And, and you're talking about Sir Corwin, like our current general? Yeah, yeah. Sir Corwin, yeah. So yeah, no, with the lightning bolts? Yeah. 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 We're very different people. I, I fought him in my first round in my first grand tournament. It was awesome. Great Yeah, my job. So I told him that. I said, don't try to be a knight the way I'm a knight. Don't try to be Sir Pindir. Don't try to be Sir King. Sir King, don't be spared. Be your own, be not a knight the way you are a knight. And he, I saw him go, okay, thank you, you know. A few months later, I um, was, we were at fighter practice, and I looked over, and I saw, you had already been knighted, right? So it wasn't you, I thought it was you. There was a knight, there was his royal highness, Sir Keen, and there was Corbin. But I was standing over there and I was watching them and I saw three knights. And it's a weird, tenuous spot where you have to be the embodiment of whatever a knight is, or a laurel is, or a master of defense, or a pelican, or a don, or whatever, but still have a take a step back and not overdo it so people think you're pretending to be what you're not. And it's a weird tightrope to walk. But I think everybody who earns those accolades, I think, manages it somehow or another. And I walked up to 
I was highness at the time. And I said, uh, Keen, Corbin's ready. We need to knight him. He goes, yeah, I know. I've been thinking that for months. <laughs> But uh, that's um, the, next, the next the next belt circuit we had was unanimous. Yeah. I mean there was I mean unanimous. It never hardly happens at all. But uh, now talking about knights like me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 All of all these, all these. I am. I'm 70 years old. I have a right to not remember something. Uh, it's in chess too. Um, what I believe is a legend, personally, I'm not a legend. I, I don't feel that I am. I don't feel that I do enough by where I'm at. But I do train. I do teach. I do try to help people. Uh, uh, some of the other nights up there, yeah. Uh, but the person on this panel that I consider a legend is that man right there. And that, and that the reason why I say that is he's a complete person. He believes in what he wants. He does it. He'll fight to keep the to nail to get it done. And I was proud of him. He fought to keep the nail for a lot of things. Right? But he still stayed strange. Right? And he has the kingdom's interest always here. Always. And he's done more for this kingdom than any other person on this panel right here. Right? And if there's any, there's any legend sitting here, that man right there is a legend. That's how. That's what I feel. About. Anybody else? When I went to my first newcomer's class academy, when I started, it was being held in the barony of the steps, and uh, I found someone to watch and learn and listen from, and said, "Gosh, when I grow up, I want to be like him." Ever since then, I have striven to be the same source of information to inspire others. But I'm still not where I want to be. So nowhere close to where you are. Thank you. Thank you. I was tell a story about King <laughs> earlier. And this is um, not go for it. This was uh, Penzik. It was during the first reign of, uh, uh, of Keen and Alicia, and. Keen had lived in the East Realm for a while, and that's where he met Alicia, and they came back here. So he had a, a large allegiance with the Eastern crown, and so we fought with the East here at Penzik. And uh, they were a glorious and, and very popular king and queen, and uh, he's one of my dearest friends. He was the best, best man at my wedding. Um, so we, uh, they, they brought a large contingent from Monsteora. And the, we had so many people there, and, and as a nod to their friendship, the King of the East granted His Majesty King a uh, generalship of the field battle. And it was a glorious field battle, let me tell you. It was an amazing field battle, and, and you were uh, one of his I was generals. His, no, I was his... Uh, uh, he was warlord, right? Yeah, I was a champion. I was a champion. Well, at one point during a hold, King's surveying the field, and he looks around, and he sees... Count William, way over there, and he had a young squire named Frederick, um, and uh, who was very fleet of foot and, and very well conditioned. Yeah, and he said, um, "Frederick, you see Count William there in the distance?" And he said, "Yes, Your Majesty." He says, "Send him my greetings." Send him what? My greetings. And. Um, there's a lot of mid roamers between us and them. And they said, lay on. And Frederick takes off running. He's like, no, 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 no. And he runs over there and he somehow survives. And he says, now the story I heard, I've never actually told the story in your presence. The story I heard is he showed up and he says, Your Excellency, His Majesty sends his greetings on this day and wishes you well. And Sir William said, well, thank you. Go back and tell the king that I send my greetings back. <laughs> Frederick is like, what? So. Well, then he runs back through this forest of mid realmers and somehow managed to survive it. As and the, this I witnessed, as he's arriving, I see movement from my left. There was a spearman who had gotten close and was close enough, threw a shot at the king, and Frederick, who's left-handed, uh, threw his right arm out, killed the guy, and then fell to his knees and said, "Your Majesty." Sir William Miesca sends his greetings back. <laughs> and that was a pretty amazing moment. And um, 
he was later awarded a Sabre Falcon on that field for that thing. But the really cool story, Keen, <laughs> Keen was really having fun this day. Again, during a hold, he looks around and he sees across us the kingdom of Kaid or their contingent. And he calls me over, and I was his herald, and he says, um, Serpent Naren, go forth, find their herald, and challenge them, tell them I issue challenge to their king in single combat. Yes, your majesty. So I walk over, and I announce our intention and whatnot, and the king of Kaid says, yes, yes, that's, that's a good idea. We'll do this thing. So uh, we arranged it so that when Leon was called, the two armies made a circle so that no one could interfere. And a knight from Kaid and myself, a knight from Monsignora, we marshaled this fight. And it was a good fight. And uh, then Keen legged their king and he dropped to the ground. Now, for those of you who don't know Keen, before he was a knight, he was so unused to speaking in public. And in his younger days as a knight, it so pained him to speak in public that it was physically uncomfortable for him to swear his oath of fealty to comfort. He really had a hard time with it as Galen and I have a hard time with it, as you can tell. <laughs> and um, so he liked this gentleman, and he stepped back and he said, Your Majesty, I know it is not a custom in your lands, but in Anstiora, when you fight an honorable opponent, and you gain such an advantage, or what would appear to be an advantage, it is customary that we ask that person to yield. This is not a dishonor. In fact, we would only pay that to an honorable opponent. So, Your Majesty, I beg you, for the sake of your people, I offer you this opportunity to yield. Go forth and seek a surgeon so that you may not be lost to your people. I'm like, wow, that was well said. And then the guy comes back with, I yield to nobody. And Keen said, then you will die for a foreign king's cause. And he stepped in and he threw a three shot combo and he hit him with the second two. Bam, 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 bam. And the guy goes, Psh. And all of us were there. We were like, that's our king. That's our king. <laughs> and we just turned around and destroyed Kaid. <laughs> and it was a thing of beauty. And later I went back and I said, I thought you didn't like speaking in public. He goes, I'm getting better. <laughs>